In this lesson, we're going to begin creating the major form of the flap. All right, so let's go ahead and select our border that we've created here for the flap of our backpack. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go to edge mode. And I'm going to select this edge right here along the back side of our object. So let's go to our left view, hitting L on the keyboard. And I'm going to grab my move tool and let's hit F3 to go to wireframe view. Now while we're here, we're going to hold down shift and we're going to drag this edge up. And I'm going to create a small polygon right here that kind of creates a lip between the border and the actual um, part of the flap itself. Okay, so it's, we're going to create kind of a stylized, puffy um, looking backpack. So let's hold down shift and let's continue to move these uh, points out. And I'm going to move this out here, hold down shift, and I'm trying to create a nice uh, thickness between the border and the rest of the backpack here. So let's go ahead and pu keep pulling this out, holding down shift. And notice that when I'm pulling these out, I'm trying to get these to match up with these segments. So I'm kind of counting those out. So we're here to this point. Let's hold down shift. Let's drag out to here. So this is going to associate here. Let's hold down shift and drag out one more time. And then we're going to leave it right here. Now let's go to our perspective view, hitting P on the keyboard. And let's hit F3. And let's take a look at our model. Now, if we hit F on the keyboard to go to our front view, you'll notice that the polygons that we've just created are much larger than the polygon that's right here. So what I want to do is I want to go to vertex mode and select all these vertices right here along this side. And if I hit F3, you'll notice that we've also selected the ones on the back side of the model. Let's go ahead and pull this over to the left and get this to match up pretty close. Now we don't have to be exact because what we're going to do now is we're going to select all of those vertices right along that center line including the front of the border and we're going to go down to our um, edit geometry rollout and in here you're going to see this make planar. Now I want to line all these vertices up in a very uh, perfect line right along the center. So let's hit X on the keyboard and that's going to move all of those in the X direction and get those to match up. Okay, So those should be perfectly straight there. So now that we have those matched up, let's go back to our perspective view and hit F3 to go back to our shaded view. And I'm going to go to edge mode, hitting 2 on the keyboard. Let's select both of these edges right here and let's bridge that gap uh, with a polygon. So to do this, we're going to use bridge. So let's open up our bridge settings and let's make sure that this is set to 1 so that way it creates a single polygon. Let's hit OK on that and then go back to our front view hitting F and you'll notice that my polygon it's kind of off at an angle here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to um, vertex mode. I'm going to select this vertex and I'm going to pull that over to where that's pretty close to being straight. Okay, we'll leave it something like that. So now that we have this set up, let's take a look at what we've got. So we've created the border, okay, that goes around the flap, creating that shape. And then we've also got the overall shape of the flap itself and it's pretty puffy and I want to make that just a little bit smaller so I'm going to go in vertex by vertex and I'm using the marquee selection so left click and drag around your vertices and just kind of pull those down and a little bit closer so we're going to get something kind of along these lines and again I'm pulling them toward the vertices that I've kind of lined up okay, in my mind as we were pulling those out and this one should be pretty good. Okay, so got a good looking shape there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. And let's start to fill in the rest of the geometry. So we have one large hole here. And the best way to tackle something like this is to split it up into smaller regions. And the way we can do that is by starting to bridge polygons together. So the way I like to go about this is I like to start out pretty close to one of the edges. So we can start out here, or we can start out here, or you can start out right in the middle. And normally starting out right in the middle is a pretty good practice as it splits that into two uh, small regions. So I'm going to select this edge right here, and then also this edge. Okay, And we're going to use our bridge tool settings. So use bridge tool settings, and instead of bridging with a single polygon, let's go ahead and bridge it with three polygons. Now with that let's hit OK 
And now we can go to vert our polygon mode by hitting 4, and then we can pull that straight up. And it's going to create a nice curve into our shape. So I like the way that looks. And then from here, I'm going to go to edge mode. I'm going to take this edge, and I'm going to push that really close to that border. And that's going to create a nice little lip that comes up there. Let's take this edge, and let me kind of center that up a little bit to where it kind of splits those two polygons evenly. And that should give us a nice uh, starting point. Let's go ahead and select two more polygons, or two more edges. So let's go from here to here. And let's bridge these. Now, you might be asking, how did you know to pick those two? Well, a good indication is to look at how many polygons you have. So it's easy to bridge uh, if you're not right next to a strip like this. So I always skip a set of polygons like this, and then I'll go to the next one in line on both sides that I'm going to bridge to. So we have this one and then this one. So let's bridge. Again, we're going to use those same settings. So we're just going to hit the settings box just to make sure that that is set and then hit OK. Let's go to polygon mode, hitting 4 on the keyboard. And then we're going to pull that out in the Y a little bit. All right, so with that pulled out, let's go to edge mode, hitting 2 on the keyboard. And I'm going to pull that over in the X. And again, creating that nice, neat little lip there. Now, if you want, you can go into your left view, hitting L on the keyboard and you can start to kind of pull these edges around just a little bit more to create a, uh, a better shape. Okay, but just some very minor tweaking here. Now I'm going to take this edge and let me pull that over in the X just to split those two. So now we've created a hole here, one hole here, and then we have a larger one here. So let's go ahead and split this one. So I'm going to select this edge and this edge right here. Okay, again, skipping a polygon on either side selecting the next two in line and then let's use bridge and we're going to use those same settings so let's go to polygon mode select the one in the middle and pull that up okay nice little look there and then we're going to go to edge mode take the one on the end and pull that all the way across there okay again just creating that nice little loop there and then we're going to take this edge and split those two there okay so now we've got um, a lot, or we have more holes, but it's easier to deal with. So let's go ahead and take care of these gaps. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that we can fill in holes. The first technique that I'm going to show you is called cap and cut. And uh, that's usually what I call it. So the way you cap a polygon is you select the border. And um, by selecting that border, it's going to select all the edges around that hole. Now with border mode, you have under your edit borders rollout, cap. So if you select that, it's going to create a single polygon around that border. Now the problem with this is that that's a single polygon. And more often than not, using cap, um, you get n-gons. Now n-gons are polygons that have more than four sides. And we don't want those in our model, as they will not um, help in the modeling process. They can be very unpredictable. So what we want to do at this point is we want to start cutting out the topology we want for our model. So to do this, let's go to vertex mode by hitting 1 on the keyboard. And we're going to right click and we're going to use cut. So with my cut tool, I'm going to go ahead and go from this vertex. And it gives me that small icon so it knows right I'm right on the vertex. So I'm going to left click. And I'm going to go ahead and cut from here to here. Okay. So let's right click to end that cutting process. So I split that, but I still have an end gone right here. So what do I do? Well, I can cut from this vertex here, and I'm going to cut from um, up to here, and then up to this point. So we'll left click on both of those, and then we're going to right click to end that. Now, before we get going too far, let's go ahead and select that vertex, and let's go to our front view, hitting F on the keyboard. And let me pull this over and down. And notice I'm trying to keep those polygons the same thickness from here to here and then also paying attention to that line that's coming off of that. So it's flowing right up into that topology just like this one is looking really nice. Now we have one problem here. We've got a triangle and we have an n-gon. So 
um, this can be a little bit of a problem. Again, the reason that we want to try to stick to quads as much as possible is because triangles and n-gons can create some unpredictable results, um, especially if we're creating this object to use uh, with a high poly model. So if we're going to be using something like TurboSmooth as a modifier, um, triangles can become a problem and n-gons especially be can become a problem. So if we can avoid it at all, let's try to use quads all the way through. So how do I solve this problem? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from this vertex and I'm going to terminate the segment right here into the side of this triangle. So terminate basically means to end a segment somewhere. And the places that we want to be able to terminate or end the segment is at the middle of, a, of an edge or on the outside of a model into another loop or another vertex okay, that continues on a loop or into the side of a triangle. Now by doing this what's going to happen is if I right click and cut and I go from this vertex here and I cut right to the middle of this triangle I've actually created two quads on that end gon and that was a five-sided polygon and then at the same time I've also created a quad one, two, three, and four out of that triangle. So all I have to do is take this polygon here, let's go to our front view, and I can pull that down. And again, try to keep that same thickness on those polygons there. And try to keep that flow. Let me pull this down a little bit closer on both of these. There we go. And I've created those quads. So I've continued on with this loop all the way around the edge, and then I have quads right here across the front. So now, um, let's go ahead and do the same thing um, here along the sides. So we could use the cap and cut method here or we could just bridge all the way across because this is set up to where we have this edge and this edge. So let me select these two. Let's use our bridge settings and uh, take that back down to one so we have a single polygon. And I could select these and hit bridge or I can not select any edges and just use the bridge tool and then select one edge and it allows me to pick the second edge that I want to bridge to. You can see with this dotted line so it's waiting for me to pick that second edge and then I'll left click and then we'll right click to end our bridge process or we can just continue on so if I keep that activated I can left click on this edge to this one and then come over across to this one and then I could even go back across that way okay so either way will be fine so now we're left with the final hole here. And you can probably think of a couple of ways uh, to cut this. So um, let's go ahead and use the exact same method that we've used so far. I'm going to just move these vertices over a little bit. Let's use that cap and cut method. So let's select the border and let's cap that with a single polygon. And then let's go to vertex mode okay, by hitting one on the keyboard and we're going to right click and we're going to cut and I'm going to cut from this point up to here okay and then I'm going to cut from here across to here and then end or terminate at this loop right here or at this vertex notice how that continues on with that loop so we did a great job okay everything looks great except for one thing can you spot it it's that triangle right there. So sometimes triangles are okay. We can usually deal with them. But in this case, I really do not want any triangles uh, because I want to be able to use this later on, maybe uh, possibly to smooth out uh, or something like that. So I really want to get rid of that. So how do we get rid of a triangle? Well, let's do what we just did. Um, this time, I'm going to go ahead and create a loop that goes from this side of the vertex or of the triangle out to the edge of my border here. But instead of using the cut tool to do that, and instead of using the connect tool, let's use a different tool. Let's go up to modeling, edit, and swift loop. Swift loop is going to allow you to create uh, loops very, very quickly. And notice it gives you a preview of where that loop is going to be. Now in this case, what I want to do is I want to create a loop right here in the middle of that polygon, but I also want it to um, round out this corner. So with this, the Swift Loop tool, I have a really great uh, keyboard shortcut to do exactly that. So I can hold down Shift 
And notice that my preview of my Swift loop, it's kind of come out a little bit. And it's given me a preview of how it's going to cut this. So if I left click, notice that it kind of pulls out that geometry and smooths that out for me. So now I have this quad that I've just created here. And I could come in and let me pull that down. And we can start to uh, reshape this a little bit. So now I've created a loop okay, along the back side here. And we have filled in this entire uh, uh, top of our backpack. Now before we end this, let's go ahead and smooth out our backpack uh, top here, the flap, by going to element mode and selecting all the polygons in this object. Now by selecting all these polygons, I'm going to switch their smoothing group and um, give it one common smoothing group. So that way it appears to be shaded and smoothed out. Now right now we have this faceted look. And so if I hit F4, or if I deselect it really quickly and hit F4, you'll see that it looks very jagged. And again, um, that's because of the smoothing groups. Now there are some of these that look like they're smoothed really nicely. And that's because those polygons are on the same smoothing group. So let's select all the polygons and put them on one smoothing group. And they will all appear to be smoothed together. So let's clear all and then go to vertex or smoothing group one. Now I could also go to vert or smoothing group 23 and it would give me the same result. Don't worry about the number as being, um, uh, don't worry about the number as much. That's not the point. Um, each polygon could be labeled as smoothing group 2 or something like that and it will smooth out differently. So for example, if I were to go to polygon mode and I selected uh, these polygons right here across the front, or let's just select that entire loop. So let's select this one, hold down shift, and select that one, it'll go all the way around. With these polygons, if I switch those to a different smoothing group, it's going to appear to be creased um, because the polygons around it that are adjacent to it are on a different smoothing group. So let's turn off smoothing group one and then turn on smoothing group two. So now if I take a look at this, you'll see that those that are on smoothing group two appear to be smoothed together. But then because these polygons are on smoothing group one, it creates a crease at the edges where they meet. So if I want all of these to um, appear smooth all together, let me select the element, selecting all the polygons, and then put everything on a single smoothing group. So we'll set that to one, and there we go. Now the final thing that I want to do is go ahead and select the edge here in the middle, and let's apply symmetry. So we're going to go to our modifier list, use symmetry, let's hit flip, and we'll get the other side of our flap here. So now that we've created that, I'm going to go ahead and apply a material to it. Uh, so I'm going to switch this color to black, so that way my wireframe appears black, and then I'm going to grab a standard material. Double click on that, let's change our diffuse color to something like a darker gray, and then let's double click on our specular, change that to a blue color, and we'll go ahead and drop that down a little bit, and then I'm going to take my specular level and pull that up to about 40 or so, and then we'll apply that to our model hitting the assign material, and there we go. So we have a material that we're going to continue using on all of our model as we progress throughout this course. So now that we've learned how to fill in gaps uh, with our model, let's go ahead and continue on with the rest of the backpack where we're going to take a look at a couple of other tools that we can use to extrude edges and also create different shapes. So we'll get started with that next.